Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Frontier Pilot Simulator. For those of you joining me for the first time ever, my name is Abouts and if you're returning to my channel for another series, I'd like to welcome you back. The Frontier Pilot Simulator is pr pretty much what the name uh, implies. You are a pilot, piloting an aircraft. It, the game shares a lot of similarities with uh, other flight simulator games. The major difference being that this one takes place in some sort of futuristic setting where the resources on Earth have been almost dang near completed. And so humans have expended out. You've colonized other planets and they are building these colonies, harvesting resources, and you're sort of this uh, cargo pilot who is keeping these colonies operating and moving resources around between the colonies, Wells also making a quick buck in the process. It's actually a really cool game. I've played it for a bit now um, by myself. I've really enjoyed it. I do like uh, some flight simulators. Um, the flying aspect of it's exciting to me. What I actually especially liked about this game is just the uh, VTOL aspect. A lot of the aircraft use uh, VTOL, which is vertical takeoff and landing. Uh, so essentially, um, if you wanted to compare it to aircraft of today, it'd be like the V-22 Osprey or the Harrier uh, or the F-35 are prime examples. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and start a new game. I actually uh, got rid of my old save so I could just kind of start right out from the beginning and you guys can see uh, what it's like when you're jumping into the game for the very first time. Now, I will warn you that while I have played the game a bit off camera, I'm not very good at the game. And I will probably crash the aircraft a lot. Hopefully, my skills from way back in my Arma 2 days uh, kick in and I can actually figure out how to pilot this thing and uh, with minimum amount of casualties. So, uh, coming right out into the game, the first thing you'll notice is it actually looks pretty good. It's definitely a nice looking game. And if you press F1, that'll cycle you through um, everything to do with controls. Uh, if you would like, you can go ahead and pause at any points in these screens if you want to see what it is. I'm going to kind of skip through because I've already read all of this. I'll just cover uh, some of the basics that are important on the aspect of the gameplay. So, there's a map. There is a world that you're in. Like I said, you're moving around resources and everything. Um, here you've got uh, hangars for repairing and upgrading your ship. You can also purchase different ships as you play. Uh, there's different uh, cargo and stuff you're going to be transporting and moving between colonies, trying to make that sweet, sweet cash money. So that's kind of what we're going to be focusing on, ship management. There is obviously uh, VTOL in terms of the fact that some aircraft, they, they vertical take off and landing, but they could turn into a plane and fly, which is pretty cool. I don't think the beginning aircraft does that because I've never been able to do it when I was uh, playing the game by myself. So here we are. We are in the aircraft. Uh, if you saw the commands in the beginning, they're, they're pretty basic. That's kind of us taking off. We can press shift to go back down. Obviously, we don't want a hard landing too much. Or we're going to damage ourselves. And there is a quest line or a story in the game. So down below, you can see a character here talking to us. Incoming signal. This is the flight control center speaking. Welcome to Aslan, the galaxy's most promising colony. We are pleased to announce that your first customer is waiting your arrival at the spaceport. Flight data transferred on board. So we've got some flight data. You can see that there's a destination point 1.4 kilometers from us. It's the yellow dot in the top right. We're going to fly off to that and start making some money. There's a cargo box off next to us. We could actually pick that up. I'm not entirely sure what that is. You can actually navigate the aircraft on the ground just by using the WASD key. Uh, if you back up to the packages, you can pick them up usually. I don't remember this package in particular being here. Let me see if I can grab it. Looks like I can. It is B2 ration. So if you hold um, the return key, which is the enter, you can pick it up. And there it goes. It is loaded into our ship, and we will just fly it right off to that uh, colony that's 1.2 kilometers away. So let's take right off from here. Begin the flying process. I, uh, I find that this is all straight uh, keyboard and everything. You don't seem to need a mouse to operate anything, as far as I could tell. All right, we're going to slow down here. 
Hey, like I said, I'm kind of clumsy with the controls. But, you know, it's like any other flight simulator. I mean, there is a lot of uh, simulated flight controls here, so there's a lot you're trying to do. And it's very easy to have a hard landing or to just bring the aircraft down accidentally. You don't have to land perfectly on this here because you can, like I said earlier, just kind of pull on to it. But uh, I do like that screen on the right that does kind of help guide you. And there we go. I think that was still a little bit of a hard landing. Yeah, because it says my hull is at 87%. Bottom left-hand corner, you will see that uh, there is a bar there. It says uh, 662, about an 850 right now. That's our battery. So this aircraft is essentially... Uh, an EV aircraft, all electric, that's kind of cool. Not burning any fuel. Not really sure how that would be possible for an aircraft, but here we are. It's especially an aircraft that, I shouldn't say that, but, you know, like a, a turbo engine or something. I mean, this aircraft obviously looks like it burns fuel because of the engines, but. All right, great, you've arrived. My name is Palm. I'm the director of Greenway. We provide assistance for customs and related logistics. I have a job for you, but first align your ship with the markings on the loading zone which we did, open the trade interface and buy some food, rations sell better than hotcakes in the colonies, you will make some money and I can report this job. Uh, the job is done, it's a win-win. Now we go to Central, it's a biofactory engaged in terraforming, spraying bacteria and all that in general, a lot of people and they all want to eat. So the reason that it actually kicked on so quickly was because I picked up those rations at the starting point instead of buying them here, so I saved myself a little bit of money. However, I will st still need to go into this screen because I need to recharge that battery I told you guys about earlier. So if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see the rations, which we could buy. I already have rations on me. That's why it says the item does not fit in the ship. I can only hold one crate of rations. And then you could charge your battery by simply holding uh, one. Nope, that's the discharge. By holding enter. There we go. So our battery is charged. We will exit this screen here. And we will take off. The rations that we're going to be selling uh, are 2.8 kilometers away, so let's head that way. Sell these for a little bit of a profit, and then we'll take a look at some other stuff. See how fast we can kind of get going. 2.7 kilometers seems like a lot until you really start moving, then it's not that much. And I definitely want to get some altitude here so I don't hit this mountain. And we are moving pretty quick now. All right, and so now we're going to start slowing down. And now we're going to crash. Ah! <laughs> so there's our first uh, crash there. And that gives you guys a chance. I totally did that on purpose to show you guys what it was like crashing. Totally didn't uh, do that intentionally. Or, I mean, did that uh, accidentally. <laughs> so when you crash, you're essentially ejected from the ship in sort of a uh, escape pod. And uh, it says at the bottom, your life and your ship are always insured thanks to the Federal Colony Support Program. Be careful, it's windy out there. So it will transport you all the way back to uh, a new ship, fully insured, like I said, but it does cost you credits uh, as uh, considerate a, um, a uh, oh, I can't even think of the name of it now. Deductible, that's what I'm thinking. It's considered a deductible on your insurance policy. So now that we're here, I can actually show you guys the the upgrade screen. So you can see here the credits we have are down in the bottom right hand corner. I kind of wish that was more noticeable, but uh, that's where it is there. We got 2,000 credits. It's really not a lot. And there's actually nothing we could purchase, but eventually if we start selling some of this stuff, we can start getting some pretty cool stuff. Different engines and all that. And at some point, if we click on this, we can eventually purchase different ships. Um, you've got just the Scarab, which is what we're using now. The Ox, which is a little bit cooler. And then the Bellina, which is like a really large VTOL and airplane aircraft. So this one actually, I believe, is just VTOL. All right, kind of. Light aviation intended for only short, medium distances. This one does have VTOL and airplane, and this has VTOL and airplane as well. So the Scarab, the, uh, Scarab don't. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and exit and uh, do that again, but the correct way. And also, I'm gonna pick up the rations because when you die, you actually drop whatever you were carrying, so you have to go back and pick them up. This actually could be really difficult because I I believe we crashed into the side of the mountain, so I don't know how we're going to get the rations without uh, rolling down the hill, but we'll give it a shot here. See if I can get close enough that I can actually pick them up. 
They should be right over here. Unless they fell down the hill, which is very possible. I definitely don't see them. The closer you get to the ground, actually, that screen pops up there letting you know. I'm going to say that the rations probably took a plunge. Um, I'm actually getting close to the ground here so I can kind of see. All right, so regrettably, we will have to actually fly back and look for or actually purchase more rations. So this is pretty cool, right? You're flying around. You can see, uh, you know, the flight controls, they work great. I mean, they feel very responsive. Um, I will say that, uh, obviously, as you witnessed earlier, it, it is difficult to slow down. If I press the shift key to try and start bringing the aircraft down, um, it, it, it drops rapidly and to get speed to pick back up so that you don't have a hard landing is extremely difficult. Uh, what is actually especially difficult is the fact that you have to hold the space key the whole time to stay in, in flight. Or you just lose power straight up. At least with this aircraft. There's no like throttle you could set to just have a, a consistent amount of of uh, power or a way to like essentially hold your your altitude. At least as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing there for that. Alright, so I'll, I'll show you the kind of purchasing screen here. So we just go right into here. It's very simple. We purchase some B2 rations. The crane is going to load them right into the aircraft. While we're doing that, we can go ahead and charge. To be efficient, it's good to do these things uh, multiple at a time, I'm sure. And they are loaded up. We once again exit, and let's actually make some real money this time. And this time, I'm going to fly right over the mountain. See, the aircraft is not very fast, but you can upgrade um, your engines and stuff, so it is possible to... Um, get engines that have a lot more thrust and that would actually probably help because I know when I hold shift and I kind of See how the engines just shut right off right now Especially when I hold shift they do I guess like pressing space kind of keeps it at a Sort of an area that makes sense All right, here we go for realsies this time. We're going to pull back a bit. There we go. Okay, a little bit of a hard landing, but not bad. Not bad. Yeah, you can see kind of how the engines just work, you know? It's pretty cool, actually, when they're just kind of working left and right. Very, very neat. All right, so let's see how much we actually get for these rations. I'm hoping we'll get a, a enough to... Well, probably not enough to upgrade. Let's see. So we come right over to here. We can see that we can uh, we can target the most profitable base, target the closest base. We're going to sell it here. The price reduced by 20 credits because of the 99% damage. So the, the load actually gets damaged as well. And that's something to keep in mind. You want to be very careful. But we did sell that and get 4,400 credits, which is a lot. Um, we can buy these empty batteries here and transport those if we want. We can also recharge, which we're going to do that. So spend a little bit of credits. And the batteries. This place is a list of places where you can sell empty G-type batteries. So Bridge Point will buy them. So we'll buy those. And those will get loaded up. And I got to think about where Bridge Point is. I'll actually open the map and show you guys kind of that part of it now. So you actually exit. If you press M, it'll bring the map right up. Now the cursor kind of comes in handy because I can show you guys. So right here is where we're at. I believe this is where we started. This is a volcano here, which I'd like to fly and check out. We've got some geysers. It's kind of cool. Ooh, the first priority cargo is accepted. I understand you are a friend of Mr. Palm. Great. It's not as bad as Vor, but rations are in great demand here. Bring more rations. We'll buy them for a great price. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to say I was glad to help. See you later. I'm not going to worry about anything else. Right here is Bridge Point. So we could bring those there. Maybe we can buy some rations at Bridgepoint. And uh, then we can... 
We could do a couple of other things. There's also, if you scroll down, you guys will see, the map is actually massive. This is where we're at. This is another area. The map is huge. There is like an unbelievable amount of places to visit and fly. I haven't even been all the way down here. By the way, you may trade on your own without special orders. Every base constantly produces and buys a number of goods and quartermasters regularly replenish lists of available and needed goods, which you can check in your ship's map interface, which is where we're at now. You can actually click on these. You will see goods that are for sale, goods you can buy, different uh, aircraft available, upgrades available in certain areas, stuff like that. It is uh, very, very cool if you're into these type of games. So once again, we're still on this small little island. I'm going to go ahead and drop this stuff off at Bridgeport. I don't believe that we have the capability in this aircraft to make such a long journey all the way down to that one area. So we're not going to worry about that just yet, but let's start heading to Bridgeport. It's off this way. You can set markers on your map, which is always handy to do, but I do see Bridgeport up there in the top, so I'm just going to go ahead and fly to it. I would like to fly over one of these volcanoes just to see what would happen. I'm sure that it would be really bad. All right, we are coming in hot. Coming in really hot. Wow, Jesus, you can see there that I just, I could not get enough power to take it out of its, its um, decline. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Sometimes when you start falling, uh, if you use the shift key, which is your descent key, and you start falling, it takes you like just a stupid amount of time to regain enough thrust to, to break that fall. And I, I find that very interesting. And I'm not sure why it is, really. All right, let's sell this. We know we're not going to get a whole lot for it, especially because the goods are now damaged. Thanks to my excellent flight skills. But we will sell it regardless and recharge. And I actually cannot repair here, so I'm going to have to fly to the main base to repair, which is perfectly fine. We'll head that way now. Especially because my hull is only 50%. You can see my engines are somewhat damaged too. And you can lose things like wings and engines and, and all that. So it's not just 100% based on your hull. You, you, can, you can have a serious accident in midair. And it's, uh, it's not the way you want to go, let me tell you. Alright, we're actually going to head straight for the... Uh, straight for the hangar here. Because we have enough money, guys, to do a little bit of upgrading if we'd like to. Here we go. We're going in a little bit of a fall. Let's just have a little bit of a soft landing here. Technically, Harriers pretty much just kill their engine at a certain uh, at a certain height, so I don't see why I can't. All right. So we click on that, we can open up the hangar. And let's take a look at what we've got. Oh, all right. We've got 7,200 credits. First and foremost, we need to repair. And luckily, it's fairly affordable. So you can see that they're actually repairing each individual component, which I think is just a nice little touch instead of it just replenishing your health uh, completely. We can recharge as well, and then we can buy a couple of different things. This actually would allow, um, would increase the capacity of our batteries. It also creates a little bit more air drag, which probably wouldn't be bad. Um, then we've got the um, Scarab chassis, so ridge, uh, speed is increased a lot. I don't know if we really need that just yet. Maybe a little bit stronger too. And then we've got the engines, which give us a little bit more power, uh, but they have a little bit more consumption. So I think the best thing to do right now would actually be to get the battery installed. It's going to increase our range, and then once I get the engines, it won't be as taxing uh, on our entire system. Too bad that battery purchase doesn't come with a free charge. All right, and then we can simply just exit this. How much is a new ship? Just because I'm curious if I did want to work towards something. 
it's a lot. It's 160,000 credits for that, 28,000 for the ox. I could probably get the ox pretty quickly, and I would like to do that um, and work my way down the ships. But we're going to leave it off here since we're out of time anyways. And then we can check out more of it in the next video. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think. Uh, if you want to see more of this, I'm happy to cover it. I'm really enjoying just the feel of the flight controls and everything. You'll be able to find a link down below in the description as well where you can check out the game. It is early access, so just keep that in mind. We're currently playing the alpha version, so there's a lot of things that might not be added, and there's certainly more uh, that I know the developers are going to be adding into the game as well. If you're new to my channel, consider hitting the subscribe button. That way you can also keep updated when new videos drop, videos like this or similar videos. It's all good stuff. I really appreciate the support, guys. Thank you all for joining me. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you next time.